Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about one of the essential concepts in React, the use effect hook. If you have ever wondered how to manage side effects like fetching data from APIs, updating the DOM, handling subscriptions, or even integrating third-party libraries in your React applications, then you are in the right place. Today we will break down the use effect hook with a simple example and explore how this hook can enhance your application by handling a wide range of side effects. Let's get started. Here I have a simple flowchart explaining how use effect works from the moment a component gets mounted to the point where it gets unmounted. There are several stages in the life cycle of use effect hook. Let's discuss them one by one. When your component first mounts, React initializes the state variables declared with useState. Think of this as the starting point of our journey. Then the component gets rendered for the first time using those state values to display the initial UI. Now, here is where useEffect comes into play. When you define it inside your component, it's like telling React, hey, I have got some side effects to handle. These side effects can be any sorts of things like data fetching, manually changing the DOM, or any operation that doesn't belong to React's normal render cycle. It's your go-to spot for performing asynchronous tasks or interacting with the outside world. But wait, there is more that this hook can do. Use effect can also depend on specific values or variables. When any of these dependencies change, the effect is triggered again. This allows you to dynamically respond to changes in your component state or props. When an effect is triggered, it performs its tasks and if it modifies the state using use state, it causes a re-render of the component. That's how you keep your UI in sync with your data. And guess what? React got your back when it's time to clean up. After the effect is done, there is a cleanup mechanism which is super useful for tasks like unsubscribing from event listeners or cancelling network requests to prevent memory leaks. Lastly, when the component unmounts, for example, when you navigate to a different page or remove it from the application, React cleans up any remaining effects to keep your application running smoothly. So there you have it, the life cycle of use effect in React from the component getting mounted to unmounted. So with that being said, let's actually build our first side effect. I have a very basic React application set up here where we essentially have a single component which stores the state for our name, defaults to React, and then here we have an input type where we can change the name. And when we change the name, it gets automatically updated next to hello. Now with this code, what we want to do is, we need to set up our code to somehow react to the name when we change it. To handle that, we need a side effect to happen whenever our name changes. You might be used to do, do this in a class component and you are probably familiar with using lifecycle methods for mounting and updating in order to create these different types of side effects. But instead, we have a function component here. We don't have mounting, unmounting, or any other lifecycle hooks at all. All we have is a hook called useEffect, which we can import from React. So I'm importing the useEffect statement from React. With the useEffect hook, we are indicating that we want to perform some form of side effect whenever a certain event occurs. So the most basic form of the use effect hook involves passing it a function. In this case, we are using an arrow function and everything inside this arrow function will be executed whenever our application renders. To illustrate it with an example, I'm going to log something to the console whenever our name changes. To do that, I'm writing console.log here. Inside that, the name is now followed by the semicolon and the current value of name. If you save that and come over to the browser and inspect and if you go 
to the console, you can see that some text is being logged. If we try to change the name in the input field here, then nothing is being logged to the console. Another thing that's kind of useful is doing certain things every time you render. However, more often than not, you will only want to do things when your component mounts or when something specific on your page changes. In order to achieve that, use effect takes a second parameter which is an array. Whatever you include in this array or the values that when they change, it will trigger the re-execution of your hook. So if we pass in here, for example, our name, now whenever our name changes, we are going to rerun this hook. So we save it here. Every time we change our name, you can see the name is being logged. This happens because it is inside our use effect and this happens only when we change our name. Obviously, the only thing that is changing on our page is our name. So something that is important to understand about this use effect hook is that you are only ever going to the code inside of it whenever the options inside of this array actually change. So you can do really something unique and create a hook that only ever runs on mount. I just keep this as an empty array and now this is essentially component did mount. So if we inspect and go over to our console, you will see our text being printed out. No matter what, if we change our name here, it is never going to print it out because this empty array never actually changes between different renders. So the way you think about this array is essentially all the values that whenever they change, you want to do something. So we know that it's working, but what if we want to delete this app component and we unmount it? We want to remove this text here because otherwise we are going to have this text hooked up and constantly being added, but never actually removed, which in turn slows down our application. So to handle this, Luckily, we have our cleanup whenever we have a use effect. All we need to do is have a written and this is going to be a function. And this function is going to be called whenever this use effect essentially is cleaned up. So we need to add a console.log and say cleanup executed. Now if we say whenever that component gets unmounted, this return is going to be called and it's going to log cleanup executed. As you can see here, we have this statement printed out. Let's go ahead and update the name and see what happens. Now we are logging each letter that is getting printed while deleting and adding our name. Along with that, we are also getting cleanup executed. So what this means is, it is always going to run the written code first and then the actual code. And the reason this happens is this written code is essentially considered as your cleanup. So every single time that this use effect ran, whatever in the written ran first to clean up whatever we did last time. For example, if you set up an event listener here, you want to make sure your cleanup code removes that that way, you don't constantly read your event listener. Well, and another example could be if you subscribe to some form of API inside your use effect, your return should probably clean that up and unsubscribe you from that API. Also, this return is going to get called anytime your component unmounts. So if this app component gets unmounted and deleted from our app, this return is going to get called as long as our use effect ran at least once, which should act always will. Basically, the best way to think about the use effect hook is that anytime you want to have a side effect occur, whether it's when your component mounts, when it unmounts, when a variable changes, when state changes, 
when your props change when anything update a new one to do something this is what use effect is going to be used for i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content thanks a lot for watching and i will catch you in the next one